Good morning and a very warm welcome to St. Luke's for this Epiphany Sunday. My name is Derek Stefanowski, Associate Rector here. And on behalf of the entire parish, we're so glad that you're joining us, especially those of you joining via live stream. As we begin our worship, I invite you to stand for our opening hymn, We Three, King, we Three Kings. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for the lessons. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them, by, I will let them, by, let them walk by brooks of water and a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it on the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather them and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they, will sh they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the book of Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the wise men who had come from the east had departed, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. 
for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the newborn Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy New Year and Happy Epiphany. The Feast of the Epiphany that we celebrate today it celebrates the visit of the three wise men, or the three kings, to Jesus. And it kicks off what really is a lifelong project for Jesus revealing to the world just who it is that he is, just who it is that God is. If the opposite end of Jesus' life, you know, the Good Friday story and all, was any indication to you that the political and religious authorities were deeply uneasy about God in the flesh, well, the birth story of Jesus which includes this part we heard today from Matthew, is filled with similar drama. The gospel lesson we just heard is not one that we hear very often, but it's a really good one. It's rich with symbolism and deep prophetic fulfillment. An angel plays a prominent role in communicating with Joseph the danger that his family is in, just as previously an angel played a prominent role in revealing to both Mary and Joseph that Mary would conceive and bear the holy child of God. Now, King Herod, he's heard rumors that something big has happened in Bethlehem, and he's not about to take any chances. As can too often be the case with rulers, Herod's ego is a mile wide. His thirst for unbridled power is unquenchable, and his tactics for maintaining power are ruthless. He is willing to lie, cheat, steal, and kill to get what he wants. And so he puts an order out to have Jesus located and killed. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are therefore forced to flee from religious and political persecution. They're forced to become refugees, leaving their life behind to seek shelter in a safer country. The angel of the Lord instructed Joseph to take his wife and the newborn Jesus down into northern Africa, into Egypt. Why Egypt? Well, for practical reasons, Egypt was outside of Herod's jurisdiction. He couldn't touch Jesus down there. And, as we heard in the Gospel lesson, ancient prophecies foretold the Messiah coming up out of Egypt. We're told that the Holy Family remained in Egypt until Herod died and until the immediate threat to Jesus' life was therefore over. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, therefore joined the ranks of countless people before him 
and millions of people after him, who by necessity fled their native lands to become refugees somewhere safer. Refugees are a profound part of the human story, despite the intense politicization that they have attracted in our own country. Since the very beginning, human beings have been forced to flee from despotic rulers, intent on persecuting people for any number of reasons, political, religious, economic. It's a profound story of the Jewish people, too. Seeking refuge in a foreign land is at the very heart of what we know as the Exodus, when Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land. And today, in our own time, humanity has begun to undertake another great process of seeking refuge from a peril unique to our own time, climate change. As the most vulnerable on the planet are already being forced to seek refuge because of rising seas, lethal temperatures, and changing weather patterns impacting agricultural production. And even as other political and economic forces continue to force people to seek refuge elsewhere. To be clear, by normalizing the profoundly human experience of being a refugee, I do not at all mean to glorify it. It's obviously not a good thing to be oppressed, to have one's life be in danger, and to have to leave behind everything you hold dear to seek shelter elsewhere. But it is a common story we share as humanity, and it is a reality that we're, recall, we're called to respond to in our own day. Because the Israelites under Moses, and then later Jesus himself, were forced to become refugees and be welcomed in a foreign land, our faith knows full well the reality of the plight of the refugee. Indeed, the book of Exodus makes an especially clear point on this topic. It says... You shall not wrong or oppress a resident alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. Exodus is calling upon us to remember that our ancestors, both our ancestors in faith and our familial ancestors, either in the not-so-distant past or perhaps long ago, they too were refugees, more than likely. That deep in our bones, we too are refugees, and that we therefore absolutely must have mercy upon the plight of those who in our own day seek refuge on our own shores. Indeed, this idea is not just a matter of national or international concern. It can be a matter of concern right here in our own town, in our own family. What about those people who cross our path looking for refuge from hunger, looking for refuge from unemployment, looking for refuge from homelessness? What about those looking for refuge from hopelessness, looking for refuge from meaninglessness, looking for refuge from the bluster and the confusion of this life? My friends, we, each of us, are called upon by God to welcome the refugee. And more than that, we are invited to recognize the refugee in ourselves, and in each other. Each and every one of us is seeking refuge from something in this world. The church is itself called to be a place of refuge from the craziness of the world around us, to be a place that nourishes, that restores, that equips us for the journey ahead, both physically and spiritually. More than that, our very own homes and lives are meant to be a place of refuge, to be a place of hospitality, a place of rest for the visitor, a place where love and peace prevails. Well, furthermore, don't be like King Herod. Be like the wise men. They were clever enough to know that Herod was devising an evil scheme to bring harm upon Jesus. May we also continually frustrate the plans of the evil forces of this world. And like those wise men who brought gold 
frankincense and myrrh to the newborn king, the very best of gifts. May we also present the very best of ourselves to Jesus in our own day. What are the very best gifts that we might offer to Jesus? I've been thinking about this this week. It might mean that we make a point to say our prayers. It might also mean that we treat those around us really, really well. It might mean that we offer the very best to those who need help, not just the scraps, but the very best. For they too bear God's image. It might mean that we treat those around us the very best that we can. For in serving and interacting with those around us, Jesus tells us that we are serving and interacting with him. That would be a gift indeed to Jesus, I suspect. The wise men gave up the things that they adored to adore the newborn Christ. Oftentimes, in our culture, indeed for myself, Time and money are what we adore most. Indeed, that is part of what many of us give back to God. We give money to support the church, when we give of our time to help out at the church, and when we make time to say our prayers, attend worship, and help those around us. God and each human being who bears God's image deserves nothing but the very best that which is precious to us, whether it be a portion of our gold, frankincense, or myrrh, or a portion of our minds, our voices, our hands, our time, or our money. So as we continue to celebrate the birth of Christ, may Christ continue to be manifest in us. May Christ's welcome for the sinner, Christ's hope for the hopeless, Christ's nourishment for the hungry, and Christ's love, joy, and peace for all be manifest in each of us this epiphany and all the days of our lives, that our very lives may be a light to the world, reflecting that light of Christ, who is the light of the world. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for our outreach partner in Spirica in Stamford. We pray for everyone on our parish intercession list. This week, we pray especially for Barbara Totten. And we commend to God's care and keeping Barbara Sinnott, Darren e. Wilson, and Cynthia Clokel, who died this past week. O oh Lord, our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you.
invite you to stand as we continue. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Luke, all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. In union, dear God, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you myself, my soul and body, with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I tie myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live now and forever in your love. Amen. Together, let us pray the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.